you'll see, um, I mean, just go with it. There's a small section there that uh, says break. It's not a break per se. Um, it kind of is, but it's not. I mean, like, I'm not asking you to just like. A movie magic break. Yeah, something like that. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. And thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. Macho, it's nice to see you. It reminds me that you could have literally been doing, I mean, literally anything else except being here. So, Oh, yeah, you. definitely. <laughs> Very unfortunate that you asked. I was like, I was this close to lying mm-hmm. to you today. Yeah, it always comes close. The temptation is strong. And, you know, yeah. it's, uh, I know often it's whenever I reach out, hit you up, it's usually like close, right? Usually day of or some, somewhere close. <laughs> and so you're, there's always that moment where you think, oh man, I hope he just doesn't, I hope he doesn't do this today. It's like, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always that, 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 that hope. feeling. And then uh, when it does happen, there's like this huge, like, relief or whatever burden that's lifted. But, uh, um not today, today. We, not today today we give you the stone of sisyphus to roll up the hill so <laughs> oh god <laughs> what's the point <laughs> that's right what is the point of any of this really <laughs> but um it just allows me to ask you how you doing my child what's going on with you you know we, we could just talk without this but uh i don't know i'm okay you know i exist another another day Closer to the end of my probation. Close. Okay. And for those listening, probation is not a bad thing for my chow. You know, he got a nice oh, little yeah, bump right, in, right, right. in in power, I guess. In enroll nope. in power. Okay. At least with pay. What? That's fine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Six month pro like from I got a promotion or whatever. Uh and it's a six month probation period. Right. So we're almost there. Excellent. And then I will leave this place. <laughs> Not this place. The, well, the you office. hope you leave this place, but then also hopefully you leave, you know. Oh, I have no hope anymore for this one. <laughs> I really don't. Um, well, hopefully some good news comes to you very soon um, and get there very yeah, soon. Man. So, yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, beat, uh, hopefully, yeah, not do that commute anymore and, you know, Oof. a little more relaxed. So, yeah, good. it'd be great. I know um, you were enjoying a little snack earlier. Um, tell us a little bit again what you were uh, what you were having. Oh yeah, that was my dinner. Grilled cheese set. I had two grilled cheese sandwiches because there's always order two. I guess was that the was that the phrase that BNSD used to do used to say? Yeah, I think always order two. Um... Yeah. Yeah. So I just made a couple of grilled cheese sandwiches with brioche bun and American okay. cheese. Okay. Not too much butter. But I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah. And I had it. That's right. I was dipping it in sour cream. Mm. I, I don't know if I've come across that before. Uh, is that something you just um, decided to do on a whim? Yeah, I decided to try it today just because I like sour cream. I like grilled cheese sandwiches. I had both. Why not try it, right? Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. I mean, hell, if it's something you enjoy, yeah, then I think go it was for okay. it. Okay. I Good. liked it. Yeah. I don't know if most people will. Sure. But I mean, I like can't it. beat a grilled cheese. It's a simple, uh, simple comfort food. And then just add with a little bit of tang from the sour cream. I'm sure yeah. it'd be nice. Um, yeah. do you, uh, oh, I was, I, I mentioned earlier too that, I mean, it would be, I'm sure it would be a lot better if we had some cream cheese in, into play, right? Yes. <laughs> a cream cheese, grilled cheese, a grilled cream cheese sandwich. Oh my God. Would that be something? I would. I'm surprised I haven't done that. I might have done that before and just never did it again. I don't remember, but it sounds delicious. Yeah. I, I think we're too busy, though, eating the blocks of cheese um, <laughs> that we don't have the chance to to make anything else out of. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Just take a bite out of the block. That's all you need. Okay. Um, I will say, also, my parents got me these things. It's like a, a brown sugar uh, boba milk tea mochi. So uh-huh. I guess it's like mochi that's supposed to taste like brown sugar milk tea which it does it's pretty good so they're just like little bite-sized snacks yeah like a little tiny thing it's like a like this you know just filled with fake well i guess it's brown sugar but fake mochi or fake uh boba 
So what, what the texture is like a mochi? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. You know where they got it from? I have no idea. Okay. But next time I see him, I'm asking. I'm sure you, yeah, you asked them to get it. No problem. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. sure, I, I imagine they get it from like, you know, uh, Asian supermarket for, you know. Maybe, but it was like a big ass bag, like Costco sized bag. Oh, so you think Costco sell them? Interesting. Mm, I'm thinking Sam's Club because they don't have a Costco card. Anymore. Ah, they do okay. Sam's instead. But it's membership thing. Sure. Some yeah, large. Yeah, because it was huge. Okay. All right. Well, um, if you do ask them again, let us know uh, what you find out. Yeah. Because they nice. are good. Good. Not as good as the, the what is it, the brown sugar bubba ice cream. I will say those are better. The ice cream. Now, I forget. Are you talking about like the popsicle type ice mm-hmm. cream thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are nice. Yes. Yeah. But not everyone has, uh, you know, I guess uh, the time or the luxury all the time to enjoy a, a frozen treat uh, at some point of the day. It's a little messy, I guess, at some point. Yeah. Oh, that one really is. Yeah. yeah. And at least with these, you just pop it in and you're good to yeah, go. Yeah, that's true. You know, we, um, as we record this, we uh, just recently, what, just had the uh, Liberty Holiday Actually, there's mm-hmm. quite a, a bit to catch up on, but yeah, I don't know. How did you uh, spend your your holiday? Uh, let's see. Saturday, I worked at the music center. Um, Sunday, I guess in the afternoon, just clean. Oh, chores. That's chores. right. I cleaned the apartment. Oh man. Okay. Clean, clean the floor, the bathroom. It was. Yeah, it was okay. Did, did you get very, and stuff. Did you get very far? Fortunately, yes. Okay. Well, Did the I whole think, damn apartment. Well, I think you feel accomplished because of that. That's pretty good. No. Waste of time. <laughs> it's a waste of time. For? That's true. You know, to be no honest. No one's I, coming here. Yeah. Sometimes I feel the same way. Like, uh, I will let things just kind of sit until someone needs to, someone comes over. And then I will. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'll clean it real good. I'll give it a good cleaning. Yeah. But just at that time, just at the very moment until they need to <laughs> show up. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's the guy talking in us, like the real male. Uh, probably. Kind of, yeah. All right, well, uh, yeah. anyway, but yeah, but, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I did that. And then went to a friend's birthday party and the evening for Sunday. So that was good. Wow. Uh, well, thankfully you'd have the, the Monday off. Yeah. Wait, didn't you? Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. It's just a day to recover, I guess. It sounded oh, like yeah. you were partying it up or something. Yeah. It's been a while since it's been a house party. I will say that. Okay. So it was fun. All right. Um, yeah. Was uh was this Monday your RDO or so? Did you have Tuesday off as well or no? I did have Tuesday off. Oh, nice. So yeah. how was uh how was your adventure this weekend? Well, we'll get more into it, but I, <laughs> I'd say that um I had a lot of uh enjoyed my my time. Uh, I spent Hello. um the weekend um in another part of the country, um in the in the deep state of uh of Texas. Um, I don't know if I said that right. Where no. else would you be? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I spent that New time. Orleans thing. That was just a that was a fluke. <laughs> That's right. Um, it's almost it's got to be Texas. So <laughs> I spent some time there. Um, and we'll have some uh, future episodes about that. Uh, to have you endure my challenge, just to oh, listen fun. and see what uh, would have been up to. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, just some highlights, you know, we, we, Royal, we, uh, mm-hmm. visited, a, a lot of good barbecue spots because that's really the only way, uh, to spend your time in Texas. The only way. No, I'm serious because it, people ask me, Oh, what are you going to try? It's like, what kind of food are you going to, it's like, it's barbecue. It's like, Oh, are you going to go like to any other kind of spot? Like sushi or pe-? no, no. It's barbecue. What are you talking about? There's no other. That's all they have there. What That's all they have. I mean, I don't understand <laughs> what you're talking about. There's no other thing to have or do. It's like, um, in this case, I, um, I was in Dallas. So, um, as, as you recall, like earlier this year, we were in Austin and then now I visited Dallas and, um, at some point, I guess I'll visit Houston and, areas around there but but Dallas is where I spend my time I you know wasn't sure how I was going to spend a lot of my time I felt like four days was a lot and to an extent it probably was probably could have condensed a little bit but um mm-hmm. in some ways I, I guess it's good to, to spread things out because there was 
especially in between meals, because that was most of what was happening, the meals. And uh, so to give a little breathing room um, was uh, very welcome. So um, but a lot of good barbecue. Uh, visited, um, I think, three or four spots, uh, part of the uh, the top 50 of, of, uh, of the big list that they put out there for mm-hmm. Texas Monthly. And um, even visited a, a burger spot while I was out there. Um, and, uh, we'll talk more about those, but, um, a lot of fun. Um, when you say Texas monthly, is their list still the 2021 list or have they yeah. dropped the 23 list already? You know, I think they do it every three years. Oh, three. If, I thought it was every other. Okay. If, if I'm not mistaken, you know, we'll have to maybe do a fact check on that, but I, I recall it's, I think it's every three years. But, um, yeah, still going off that 2021 list. And uh-huh. um, surprisingly, you know, even despite all the food I've consumed, there are still a few more places I wish I could have visited um, in that time. But I guess that's why uh, there will be a return trip at some point. Who knows? Of course. But um, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of good food, a lot of good people, um, good number of things to do in, in the city of Dallas and thereabouts. So... Uh, looking forward to kind of put that together and share that with you um, some point soon, you know. <laughs> um, sure, but sure. Uh, before that, it uh, reminds me, there were a few other things that uh, came to mind, a few places that I visited um, that I did want to mention. One place uh, was a restaurant uh, nearby, a local spot. Uh, called Back Home in Lahaina. It's a uh, Hawaiian restaurant in the city of Carson. And um, it's a spot that's been there for a long time, kind of an, in, you know, uh, a really well-established uh, restaurant. They make some of the, well, I some regard as some of the best Hawaiian food that you can have in the area, if, you know, if not just outright. But um, I'd mm-hmm. gone there partly, um, well, one, I, I, I've gone there a couple times previously, but I think uh, I I did make a trip out there because in line with uh, some of the those recent events at least uh, you know as we're talking from those uh, fires in in Maui and uh, other parts of you know Hawaii um, and so I think they were doing a little you know uh, fundraiser or or some some uh, sort of effort yeah. to you know support so um, you know all you do is order you eat and you know I'm sure some of Part of that goes to some of the efforts going out in Maui. I don't even know what the latest is over there. I mean, you know, it seems like news has, at least here, you know, has quieted down. I'm sure people are still following those who are. But mm-hmm. as far as the news cycle itself, you know, it, it unfortunately seems that things have quieted down and people are, I don't know, it seems like they're moving on or I, I really hope that's not the case, but I don't know. Um, but... Uh, I don't- I don't know if we talked about it, but there was the, um, well, this was like when it was still fresh news. Yeah. It was like um, where Spam donated a, a truckload of, of Spam to the victims of the fires. No, you didn't mention that. And I, I don't recall that either. So tell me a little bit about that. Let me see if I can pull something up. I don't to... know all the details. I just know that Hormel, which I, the, the, what blew my mind was Hormel chili is my favorite chili. You mentioned, and they yes. Make spam. Uh-huh. I didn't know that it was the same company. My mind was blown. It's amazing what you find out. (laughs) Uh, Oh, shit. Now you're real riled up to um, show support, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) We bought spam after just because, like, all right, right, we saw that from Costco size spam. That's funny. Uh, Because, yeah, it was, it was a, I think, truckload worth of spam. I don't remember. Well, here's a news article, I guess, just from what I pulled up. They sent five trucks to load of Spam, a popular favorite, after uh, the Maui fires. Wow. Why Spam such a big deal in Hawaii? Well, it was introduced as an inexpensive meat product um, and made its way to Hawaii after World War II. Uh, Hmm. Became part of local culture, still remain a popular comfort food. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't care what people say. They think it's a, you know... Sure, it could be like a little overdone if you just eat it by itself, but then we eat cream cheese by itself, at least two of us. So <laughs> I don't think it's a problem that you just eat spam yeah. by itself. If you just took it out of the block and just, I think that's fine. But I'm sure most people that are more decent will, you know, they will, uh, they'll prepare it in more, uh, more fun ways, I guess, more uh, enjoyable ways. 
But uh, yeah, that's good to know. Um, so you can maybe we should get Hormel here and uh, get him to. Yo, Hormel sponsorship. <laughs> I will eat as many cans of chili as they want on air. <laughs> Or spam as well. Neither one. Absolutely. Both at the same time. It's like you hear that spam? So you hear that sport, uh, Hormel? Okay. We'll uh, we'll put this on blast. <laughs> I'd be so happy. Yeah. Tag them. Tag them when you post it. Um, just a cursory look at some of the results. I think those truckloads seem to uh, equate to oh man, over two hundred sixty-five thousand cans of uh, God, which is great. That's a lot. You know, that's great. That's a huge donation. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's a real help. Real help. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't have really anything real meaningful to say. I mean, I uh, haven't really prepared anything meaningful, but I'm sure, you know, there are there's still efforts out there uh, to um, support those efforts, or the, the recovery and, and restoration of, you know, the areas, particularly in Maui. Um, and so I'm sure there's some resources that we can share um, and we'll, we'll put in our notes and so forth. But um you know, I, I hope that uh, if anyone does happen to know anyone there, uh, that those that you do know are doing well. And of course, that everyone and just anyone there that that's experienced that is um, is doing what they can to uh, to get by and rebuild, you know. So it's it's a scary, scary uh, event, honestly. I mean, um, I mean, really California, like I mean, we are known for our share of, uh, wildfires and, you know, we've experienced some of the largest, uh, that, you know, recorded, um, probably outright in the last couple of years. Um, and wildfires are just coming up anywhere and out there. Uh, but you know, whenever it does happen, um, it, it takes a lot of effort to get things back on track. So I hope, uh, I hope these people do. And I, I, I don't really know what the stance is. Again, I didn't look this up either, what the stance is on, um, uh, you know, visiting Hawaii, like as a, as a visitor, as a tourist. Uh -oh. You know, I think initially they were saying, please don't visit, you know, but then I think mm -hmm. they've softened that. I think partly because of, you know, the the need for right. tourism uh -huh. or at least the the economic, you know, implication mm -hmm. Um and that need. So I, I don't know, maybe I'll, if I can find something on, you know, what, what that is, we'll share that as well. But, um, yeah, but I guess the takeaway here is, um, uh, spam comes from Hormel. And so I guess we'll be seeing a lot more spam in, uh, in our futures here, my show. Hell yeah. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> okay. I, I think that was the most important thing. So that's good. But um, back home in Lahaina was, uh, as I mentioned, a good, uh, a good restaurant to try if you're in the area or if you, if you do want to make the trip out here, I think it is worthy of a visit out here all the way in, uh, in the city of Carson. Um, I just remember ordering a, a large platter. They have very, so many different types of traditional foods, um, Hawaiian fare and things like that. And they serve it in, you know, individual sizes or large, uh, servings, but got a little platter of, of a little offering of everything. There was some fried chicken in there, some um, marinated beef, some pork, um, some, yeah. So, I mean, all were, were just uh, very delicious. And I think what's really nice, like on the weekends, is that they um, they they offer uh, live music in the venue. Oh, nice. And it's something, it's a tradition that they've been doing for a long time. So uh, a lot of these uh, musicians and, and um, you know, playing uh, Hawaiian style music and um, okay. Hawaiian fair and and there's even like hula dancing and, and other and those kind of performances while while music while the music is being played so it's kind of nice to see and you can tell that there's a group um, you know that regularly visit and that um, uh, yeah they you know they they have their Hawaiian shirts and and relaxed mm -hmm. you know outfits and and they're there you know they're enjoying the the scenery and and the and the vibes over there. So it's, it's a very nice, uh, restaurant and, um, very good crowd to be with. So, and the music and everything just makes it a nice experience overall. Um, so in addition to the mains from that platter, there was also some dessert as well. Uh, one of which is, um, Halpa, uh, cheese, I think it was a cheesecake. So Halpa is, uh, it's like a mixture of, well, it's a coconut flavored, you know, mixture of 
uh, like water and cornstarch and flour and things, well, not flour, but cornstarch, you know. So so it's like in between a uh, a jelly and a uh, and a pudding, you know. So just think of like the in between oh, of that consistency. Is it in a cup? Uh, in this case, no. It's uh, just served in like sliced squares, you know. Oh, okay. Is it? Does it remind you of something though that you're, you're thinking of? No, I'm just looking through their pictures and I saw something in a cup that was that fit the description. I see. I mean, it. You know, this is. It's definitely a very. You know, the coconut's def- definitely there. I don't know if it's natural or artificial or whatever, but it's definitely a strong coconut flavor. It. You know, personally, actually, I. I really couldn't. Um, uh, pinpoint that flavor where else I've tasted it, but I know it's we've tasted it in in other Filipino um, uh, desserts or things like that. In in other, you know, whatever they have with uh, with coconut in there. So mm-hmm. I, I I don't quite remember exactly what it was uh, what I was trying to uh, recall with that, but um, definitely familiar flavors, even though from a different part of the of the country and the world. Um, it's a uh, familiar comfort. So that was, uh, that was nice to enjoy as well. So, um, nice. so that's back home in Lahaina and there are a, a nice offering a handful of, of excellent Hawaiian restaurants out there. And, um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, supposedly there's one out here in little Tokyo at the Honda Plaza. Hmm. I forgot what it's called, but they have the like they're never open. They're only open from like one to four or something like that. One to four. Interesting. But I heard it's really good Hawaiian food. Well, if you find it, send it over. We'll share that and then one day maybe we'll have to pay a visit. Yeah, I think it's called Aloha Cafe. Oh, I see. That oh that's right. Actually that's um I don't remember the actual uh relation, but I know it's I just remember vaguely it's like John's coworkers maybe friend or oh, some okay. relation thereof so I uh, yeah so that that's in the same plaza where uh like a tea master is and uh barbecue uh, chicken yeah well yeah that's yeah. right um yep. but and, yes uh, it says here only open Thursday Friday from 10 30 to 3. yeah it was uh I think a lot of there were definitely a lot of changes um neat you know during certainly during the pandemic and I think yeah. maybe in the past year I think there were some significant events that uh happened that may have influenced you know oh really it's stuff now I don't I don't know the details but anyway okay. as far as I, I am familiar with the restaurant you're talking about because of what I just said um uh friend of a friend of something i don't know but some sort of yeah 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 so um i remember that but the food there is also pretty you know i consider it authentic and um it is good too um been there for breakfast had some lunch there yeah it, but it's been a little while it's been been so um if we do find a pocket of time ever uh with that time frame you mentioned then maybe we'll maybe we will I, I don't know. You don't have a Friday RDO anymore. Uh, I know. I know. We'll have to figure something out. Maybe switch a day or actually just take some some time off. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Uh, that's fine. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. A um, couple other places, though, I wanted to, to bring up. Um, also, kind of a local spot here, closer to me, uh, is a a pop-up called uh, Kitchen's Corner, and it's actually a barbecue pop-up um, in the city of Compton. And um, I think for some, it might create some moment of pause, uh, thinking, uh, "Wow, interesting!" In you know, in that area. But um, I, I'll tell you, it's uh, it is um, a really good uh, place to uh, find yourself some Texas-style barbecue. Oh, um, okay. I can't remember how I came across it. I know it was in the socials, so I'm sure, you know, some of the people oh. that I, I follow are probably, you know, talking it up and it caught my interest there. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I've seen yeah. this on the TikTok. You've seen it on TikTok? Okay. Maybe yeah. I have to. Maybe that's where I came across. I don't remember. It's either TikTok or, you know, Instagram. Um, but yeah, uh, they're, they are just making waves out there. Um, okay. And it's... It's been one of it was one of those places where 
it really uh, motivated me to relive some line culture. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, so I think they're open Thursday through Sunday. And it's usually one o'clock. And they usually say like eight o'clock, but they they tend to sell out way before that. Let's yeah, say around like five or six. So uh, at least lately. So, um, but yeah, they, they are serving now. They got a little trailer set up um, in front of... Uh, it, it's on the street on the block where um, a library is and then across the street is a park. So I think it's on Atlantic and Rose. That's kind of the intersection, if I recall. But um, I'm telling you, this place is popping. It's like people are, the word spreading, people are hearing, they are coming. And um, and the food they're turning out is is enjoyable. I mean, it's great, um, okay. especially as far as uh, Texas barbecue goes. Um, so, uh, I, I definitely enjoyed, what did I have? I had, um, I think I had a rib, uh, so they have like, they sell it in plates. It's not necessarily a la carte like you would, but you know, Texas style, whatever. So they have plates, but like one, but, uh, you can choose what proteins you want in there. And then it comes with a couple of sides. So in my case, mm. I think I had a three meat plate, you know, so, uh, with that, I got some brisket ribs and, um, a chicken link. So, um, like chicken link. Yeah. Chicken link is a very, okay. it's actually a, a common, uh, oh, item yeah. in, I don't know how to classify it. I want to say, uh, I'll just say this, you know, with, um, maybe with a degree of naivety, but, uh, in black barbecue. Okay. And I'm talking about, you know, um, that we, and I'm talking in the context here in, um, in LA, uh, where we see, you know, um, black owned businesses that prepare barbecue, a lot of ribs you see in there, maybe sliced meat, um, which might be the equivalent of like a brisket thing. But um, I, I remember seeing a, a video or something that maybe I will look up and share. But um, but Chicken Link is definitely one of those items that you will mm-hmm. see in there in, in that kind of menu. Okay. And um, something that is worth trying. Um, yeah, so it, not necess- So that item is not necessarily in the context, per se, strictly of like Texas barbecue. It's actually more in the te- in the context of um, uh, black barbecue. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. Um, but but uh, good nevertheless. You know, it's smoked and um, very good flavor. Um, you know, as it is, chicken is. Um, can dry out right i mean it's that kind of meat but um this this is not the not the case for that so um and then in addition to that i also wanted to get another plate because um i'm not going to wait in line just to not order uh, a mountain of food so in addition to that i also ordered a uh, a dino rib plate so that's the beef rib the large um beef rib nice so that's a separate plate. Same thing, like comes with a couple sides and whatever. So okay. I got those two things. Um, in my case, you know, I arrived maybe maybe an hour, maybe 45 minutes before they opened. And there was already like, I don't know, maybe a dozen people ahead. Um, and then by the time we opened, there's probably uh, at least 20 people behind, you know. And that line just, you know, stayed stayed the same as far as uh, the size of that line. So people are coming, you know, and they're visiting and, um, but they did a pretty good job of turning, turning around the orders and yeah, they, um, and the food itself, like I said, was, um, was great. I mean, as far as what I enjoy with Texas barbecue, you know, as far as how the smoke of the meat and how tender, you know, certain proteins are and, and again, like I said, um, I've said before, like the, the Texas Trinity, I think, is the standard um, and what you you should order as far as, you know, enjoying a good variety of um, uh, a restaurant's offerings in, in Texas barbecue. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's great. It It's just it's super popular right now. So, you know, lines are just they're just crazy. So you need to get there early, you know, as we've had our share of waiting in lines of course and getting to places uh, way ahead of uh opening and and in our deal of waiting so um 
I don't know. Did, what do you think? What do you mean? Just waiting in line? Well, I mean, I don't know. Is this a or, place that sounds... Oh, this place specifically. Yeah, it does. It, it looks like I'm looking at their Instagram. It looks good. Yeah. Like, it actually looks really good. And I'm hungry. Well, I job. hate you. Well, don't... <laughs> this is another part of the reason why um, you are always reluctant to, to jump on. Um, but that that's why we're here, to um, engage... Engage the senses. Is that right? Is that right? It looks okay. so good. <laughs> well, don't forget, my child. You you have a, a handful of barbecue spots. Uh, you know, not too far from you. So that is you don't, true. You don't necessarily have to trek all the way down, but if you do, we'll, we welcome you, and um, we'll make sure to make it worth your while. Hey, yeah. yeah. But um, too bad. Not too that's, far. That's uh, kitchen's corner. Okay, uh, out in uh, set up in Compton. So, um, and then one one other place I wanted to uh, mention. Um, I was visiting out with um, uh, with some friends, and uh, this they they we had been talking for a while and visiting. Um, wanted to visit this spot uh, that they hadn't been to, and you know been uh, wanting to, and uh, we made a day to pay a visit. And uh, this is a place I'm surprised, actually, that we haven't um, spoken of uh, in a while, if hold at on. all. Hold on. Hold on. Let me interrupt you real quick. I'm looking at the Kitchen's Corner Instagram, and I'm looking at this picture that's credited to you from your trip there. Right, because I made a trip there. Like, Yeah. Right. They, they actually posted your picture. Right, because... Uh, awesome. Well, thank you. Um Thank them, I guess. How I mean, is, you know, the beans. The beans are, I think they're on the sweet side, which is nice. They're like oh, those sweet perfect. beans, baked beans. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, I mean, you know, it's like I put stuff on the stories, right? Um, every so yeah. often. And so when they, for those, for the people that actually manage their own accounts and, you know, actually look at their own stuff, um, I guess they like what they see. And then I'm happy to share and then they share like. So that's fine. Nice. That was cool. I didn't realize that you were on their page. It won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making my mark. <laughs> hey, look at that. You know. Um, anyway, but yes, uh, good on uh, Kitchen's Corner. I forgot where we were. Oh, yes. So this uh, the restaurant I'm talking about uh, that we paid a visit to is um, is a familiar mainstay, actually, for uh, all of us, my child. It's, uh, we went out to Howland Ray's. And um, hey. uh, we visited the um, the Pasadena location, yeah. which is okay. new to new to me and certainly new to them. Um, hadn't been there in quite a while, um, definitely since pandemic and so forth. Oh, and holy! You're right. Haven't been there uh, to the Pasadena location at all, but um, it was a very interesting visit. It was a great time to be there, and similarly, you know, it reminds me of the times of. Um, of waiting in line and line culture and, and getting there early to snag a, a good spot and not wait too long. So, I mean, I suggested, you know, to get there maybe an hour early. So got there about an hour early and, um, surprisingly there was like no one, uh, at the restaurant. Um, really? so it was a little surprising. Um, but of course, not all all the same welcome. I think because there was no one there, I think we were a little relaxed. So we walked up the street. I think uh, they grabbed some coffee, um, and then we walked back. Only a couple blocks, and I think even by the time we walked back, there's like one person that showed up. So, um, so we we there are a couple benches right outside the restaurant. So we just kind of sat ourselves there, and then as uh, the time came closer. It, more people started showing up. So I'd say Double. maybe by that half time, in, including us, yeah, maybe half an hour, 45, something like that. Okay. Um, and yeah, maybe like a dozen people in line, you know? Wow. Yeah. That's so nice. I let my, uh, I let my friend take the ordering. Uh, I let him uh, take the, the reins on that. Um, <laughs> As you should, because yeah. I'll leave it to you and it'll be. Yeah, it'd, it'd be way too much. Yeah, so make sure you got the order right, get the lingo right, you know, all that. Teach them the different um, 
spice levels and, and all that. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think they did, they did pretty good. Actually, I didn't really pay attention. I, I sat down already <laughs> as soon as I got inside. It's like, you take care of that, please. Um, <laughs> but it, it's a great space, you know, uh, got several booths inside the restaurant and then there's still several tables outside. It's a great space, my child. Um, and they serve alcohol as well. So if, uh, if that's yeah. something you want, then they got that too. Um, and that line just, um, I think it maintained maybe, you know, maybe up to 20 people, you know, in that line, uh, during the time we're there. So the line's there, you know, uh, I don't know, just like, you know, before times, I suppose, uh, just when it was Chinatown only, um, Mm -hmm. that line was strong. It would maintain, I, I, I don't know what the lines are at Chinatown these days, um, how they compare and, um, but but uh, there's still a line. People are still showing up. They're showing out. And uh, but I think part of the maybe part of the reason also, um, if we don't see a strong line, is because I I believe they still offer delivery through DoorDash. So okay. I, I'm sure yes. there's still a a good part of that you know base that when they introduce that's like yeah this is the way to go right. So uh, that yeah, that's true. and of course that with locations in Chinatown and Pasadena, then that radius, you know, uh, has just kind of is a little larger now, right? Like where it can reach you and where you can get your, your hot chicken fix. Uh, I did want to mention that, uh, one item I, why, well, what did I order? It'd been a while. So I'd ordered, a a Lewis style Sando. So that's uh, that's the sandal with toast. with the toast, not the yeah. grilled cheese toast, but just the toast. You remember that? Now that brings it back. But that was a, yeah. Whew. But Lewis style uh, toast subbed out there, and um, but with the original sando recipe. And I say original because there is a new item out there now uh, called the sando 2.0. And um, oh, okay. And uh, my friend ordered that, and I tried some of it, and it's. It's not, I don't think it's meant to replace the original Sando because they're both on the menu because they both offer a different uh, take on on the Sando. It's still the big honking, you know, you know, piece of fried chicken breast on there. But as far as, you know, what's in the Sando is an addition is, is different. Um, there are some, I'm trying to remember offhand, like what it is, but um, all I remember is there's some sweet peppers in there. And I think a, like a Swedish, not Swedish, but like sweet-ish um, mustard <laughs> sauce, I want to say. Okay. Um, so it's a different, you know, there's a different flavor, right? It's not the original Sando with the coleslaw and the cheese mm-hmm. and, you know. Um, but yeah, this this Howland 2.0 Sando is, uh, it's a different take. And um, I think I think it'll do well. I hope they keep it on there. Yeah. Um, and I hope they, if if they don't do already, I'm sure they'll do a, a Lewis style Sando of this as well. Um, really? So, yeah. Oh, I is there bacon in there? <laughs> I'm trying to recall. <laughs> if there is, I'm dead. I mean, yeah. That, Let me uh, see here. Probably makes it worse. Sando 2.0. Boneless breast, melted cheddar, smoked bacon, uh-huh. pachillo peppers, sweet money mustard, and butter bun. There you go. There you go. So, um, interesting. So that again, it's, I clear. Yeah. It's definitely not going to replace the original Sando. It's just another item to the offering that people can enjoy a different flavor. So there's definitely a more sweet and smoky flavor. I think, you know, uh, that's, that's that you get with this Sandos as far as a more, um, like I would say comparably fresher, like, you know, that kind of ass acidic with the slaw and, with the original Sando. Um, so, but still is hot and uh, brings the heat as, okay. as good as ever. So um, I did caution, you know, you know, not to necessarily go straight to the hot, you know, level, just start with a medium and um, you know, maybe another time, I think they ordered maybe like a wing or tender separately, maybe as hot, um, okay. but um but as far as like the main, you know, with the Sando or whatever, just get it, you know, medium and enjoy it that way. So, um, 
but yeah, but but that's uh, over, that's Howling Rays over in Pasadena. Like I said, I realize that I'm surprised that we haven't really we haven't really done. I mean that that would be a place that would be a spot that we should definitely that we would definitely talk about, and we haven't um, because we've had our share of uh, of that. So I yeah. don't know. We'll have to we'll have to work that out. Uh, work that in there um, at some point, but, um, but you know, uh, it's just as good as ever. So if you're out there in Pasadena or Chinatown, um, they're out there and they're still, yeah. uh, still showing up. So it's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. So anyway, um, Hey, let's, um, let's take a break and uh, we'll come back in a little bit. Okay. So, commercials have we gone that big um not really but oh so we'll be it's right not back. an ad break <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> hey guys do you want a root beer that's got a little bit of bite then you need to try burks burks has been quenching thirst since 1798 and it's still the best tasting root beer around with its bold flavor and caffeine kick Burks is the perfect way to wake up or wind down. Whether you're enjoying a burger and fries or a slice of pie, my child, Burks is the perfect drink to pair with your meal. It's also great for a summer day on the patio or a winter night by the fire. So next time you're looking for a refreshing and flavorful root beer, reach for Burks. It's the one with the bite. Burks, hey, it's the one with the bite. Anyway, so my chow, uh, I just wanted to continue Onto on here. Ships, let's go. <laughs> I can finally get paid for this. Oh man! In your dreams. Moving on. <gasps> Speaking oh, of man. food. <laughs> thanks, for t- <laughs> thanks for joining us again. We talk about more of our food adventures, local spots, and pop ups. And soon aspirational sponsorships, which will never happen, but that's fine. We're talking oh, well, about <laughs> counting on it. <laughs> talking about good food and uh, good people here, and again, sponsorships. Um, although there's plenty to talk about on my side, uh, like I said, I uh, just uh, visited Texas, and um, there's still plenty to gotta prepare for that. Um, I wanted mm-hmm. to talk about uh, previously. Um, that uh, a, a place that we recently visited together and we were able to enjoy uh, some food together. Um, and so I wanted to kind of talk about that. I hope you can recall in the recesses of your mind, um, you know, some things about that. It doesn't sound Damn. very promising from you. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize it's been that long since we've done this, huh? Uh, since, yeah. Well, oh, wow. uh, well, we were out there... Yeah, uh, like late August, you know, maybe August a couple 19? weeks. I'll say a couple weeks yeah. out there. Yeah. About so, three. um, the spot we wanted to to highlight today and talk about is um, a little jewel of uh, New Orleans, and uh, that's a restaurant out there in Chinatown, actually, mm-hmm. um, of all places. But as the name kind of suggests, it is a little jewel. Um, out here in in the city of LA, uh, in an area that's probably supposed to be dominated by uh, Asian fare, but hey, you got hot chicken in that in uh, in Chinatown, yeah. so why not uh, not why New Orleans cuisine? So let's add that in there too. Now, I guess as a little context as to how we found ourselves there, um, uh-huh. not not not, not uh, completely. Uh, motivated by ulterior motives, but <laughs> we uh, found ourselves out there. Uh, we met up, and um, around that weekend, um, you said we were there out on the nineteenth, right? But 19th, yeah, th- yeah, yeah, that weekend uh, kind of marks uh, another year gone by. Um, seven. That, yeah. Oh, seven. Yeah. yeah that's Since crazy. Our. Um, our our friend uh, gone but kind of not forgotten, um, Patty Patrick. Uh, we've talked about him in kind of earlier installments of this uh, series mm-hmm. and program, but um, he's uh, a good friend of ours that we've known uh, 
we knew for, you know, back in high school and maybe even thereabouts before, but I spent a lot of good time, um, with him. And, uh, unfortunately he, uh, is no longer with us. Um, and, uh, so like I said, he's, um, gone, but, but not forgotten. And so, um, we paid a visit to, uh, Patrick out, um, in the, uh, what is that place? The cathedral. Right. Thank you. Uh, our lady of angels. You thank you. In uh, in downtown over there. So probably one of the last places he would want to end it up, but that's his place of rest. So let him rest. Yeah. It's fine. He can haunt around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, 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 it has been a while, um, since we've been able to just kind of visit and as much as said, it's like, it's kind of been a while since, you know, time has gone by, um, and, uh, we wanted to make sure that we, we paid that visit just to make sure that, um, we don't forget. That's all. So one of the things we, of course, you know, we're not just, well, here's the thing. We're not just going to meet up just to go there. Okay. I mean, look, no, Pat, of course not. he's, he's fine. You know, he's important. He's fine. But I mean, we, there, we can't you gotta eat. You got to eat. Okay. I mean, guys got to eat. It's the symbol of our friendship. Even his mother said it. That's right. Exactly. So, um, no doubt that we got to, um, keep up with, uh, with tradition and, (laughs) um, and all of that in perpetuity. So, so we needed to find a place to eat. And, uh, unfortunately my child was kind of pressed for time. He had, um, he's a very busy man. So, uh, we wanted to make sure we, uh, put his time to good use. So there, you know, we wanted to one, I wanted to visit a place, um, you know, that, Patrick would have gone to and that or you know, that he has visited and, and kind of I rem, reminds, introduced. you know, yeah, had introduced. And yeah, Patrick, you know, when I look back, you know, I had this list of places that I, I try to remember that um, he's been to and he introduced. And this was, again, back before, like, in big days of Instagram, maybe, you know, even Yelp to an extent. Um, but, you know, we find these he find these places you want to try them out and. Looking back, uh, he had a pretty, uh, pretty good palate. It it turned out, you know. So um, some of those places I would keep in mind and try to visit from time to time. And a lot of these places are places that are popular now, popular even back then to an extent, but um, they're still mainstays today. So including uh, this spot, Little Jewel, and. Mm. Yes. How convenient for you, though. <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> this was fresh off your trip from New Orleans. Well, that's true. And You're... Conveniently, the uh-huh. closest place that reminded you of Patrick is a New Orleans restaurant. Well, look, I didn't want to look. It's either know, that man. or we could have driven like, I don't know, 20 minutes uh, east or west or whatever. Some other direction farther. Um, we, we could have gone to Echo Park. We could have gone to Silver Lake or Mid City or whatever. We could have, but we had time. We didn't have that much time. It's like you got to travel there, then you got to order, and uh, you got to eat the actual eating, and then had travel an back. Hour to kill that that is afterwards. so that is no look. So, so that yeah, hour, the allocate. No, I don't think so. That hour, it didn't have to be this New Orleans style restaurant. <laughs> right after you came back, all right. I'm just saying. I, th- I think Patrick has been uh, watching over us for a little bit and uh, kind of orchestrated this in a very beautiful way. Uh, uh, in a way I don't that, know that- <laughs> if you can invoke this here. <laughs> Sounds kind of uh, self-serving. I don't think so. I think it's uh, just um, the alignment of the stars and... Uh, Starting you to know. sound like one of those scammers on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we've been scammed for a long time, my child. If they've been listening for this long, we've been doing a good job. Of- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Fourth but, ball. Right. So, um, yes, as my child mentioned, that it, it's very uh, very convenient circumstances uh, that we visit this like place. Like John's bachelor party. Okay. Huh? <laughs> it is John's bachelor party. Uh, that hap- that happened to take place uh, in the greatest city of the world of barbecue. But anyway, um, 
we move on and we uh we talk about uh this spot little jewel of of new orleans but yes um this was a spot that patrick had uh, brought me to ah oh man i i can't remember offhand um when they opened uh it's definitely like like early 10s let's say you know okay. but um it's but it has been around a while um see if i can look it up i i have no idea but as as we talk about that um this was, you know, when he found this, it was a relatively new spot. And, um, you know, I don't think that we necessarily knew, um, you know, what New Orleans food was. We, we weren't really talking about different culinary, you know, flavors and things like that. What I'm sure what um, caught his attention was that they offered a mac and cheese uh, dish. And um, I'm sure that wasn't more than enough to catch his attention. Um, if <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. like, if he has his food groups, like it's cheesesteaks, like mac and <laughs> cheese, you know, and seafood buffets, know. you know, things like that. <laughs> so, um, but a mac and a good... It didn't even have to be a good mac and cheese. Like you could just go to uh we used to go to um a corner bakery. I'm not saying it's like that, <laughs> but we would go there often and uh we just order the mac and cheese over there and that would be you know, that would be great. But um this spot, Little Jewel of New Orleans, uh on Ord Street in Chinatown, um is Definitely an interesting, you know, setup. I mean, I think it was new back then. Uh, maybe it's a little more common now, or maybe, you know, uh, not as uncommon as you might think. But I think what was kind of unique at that time, at least for us, is it's a restaurant, but it's also a, a small convenience store kind of grocery kind of kind of deal. Um, you recall, my child, we we stepped in. Um, and you were greeted, you know, there's some table seating and, mm -hmm. you know, a, a counter to, to order. But you also saw that there was a uh, an area for, like I said, like conveniences. Uh, they yep. sold uh, like a little market. You could buy like a small door on the left. Yeah. Do you remember what kind of things you saw uh, over there? There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Drinks, snacks. Yeah. Um, like special or artisan beer i think some of them was but not just that it was also like actual like soft drinks as well that i've never seen before so stuff i guess that's more that you'd see more out in the in the south i guess i don't, I don't recall yeah i don't um and i was uh even having gone there uh visited in new orleans yeah i don't i don't quite remember i think maybe there was one soda i think it was hanks I don't remember if Hanks is uh yes. unique to uh maybe the region in New Orleans. I don't know, I gotta look that up. I don't I don't do enough research, if at all. Probably not at all, but <laughs> um but yeah, I mean you can find, you know, things like hot sauces over there, maybe like right, uh yeah. pickled vegetables, uh like you said, different sodas and drinks and um yes. So mm -hmm. Little Jewel established in twenty fourteen. Oh nice. Okay. And Hanks is based in philadelphia okay then very interesting <laughs> i don't know where it comes from then like as far as uh what how it finds its way here maybe it's uh yeah. maybe it is in new orleans or thereabouts and it's popular i don't know but it's yeah. here it's fine yeah uh, and it's great okay good good um but we wanted to talk a little bit again about like uh maybe the meal that we had i I think I did end up ordering for us, but kind of based on what I think I would have ordered um, with Patrick, oh, you know, at that okay. time. So with with one exception, maybe. But but um, <laughs> let's. We, uh, we had to try it. We had to try it exactly. So one of the first items to discuss was um, was a po' boy. So again, these were things that. I had no idea, you know, what they were. 
um, at the time, you know, when we first went mm-hmm. there. If you're saying 2014, um, yeah, it's a long time. So uh, we just knew it was a sandwich and it's like a sub-style sandwich, right? We, I think we mm-hmm. talked about before that a po' boy is not necessarily a, a sandwich with shrimp specifically. It's just a style of sandwich that yeah. happens to have, you know, thing that could have fried pretty seafood. much anything you yeah. want. Yeah. yeah. Fried yeah. seafood, whether it's shrimp, oyster, even roast beef, chicken, whatever. Oh, yeah. It could literally have almost any kind of filling in there. Just It just has this characteristic. It's the... You know the roll or the bread that it's on it's got a french mm-hmm. style roll and then usually it's also filled with uh, like shredded lettuce and tomato and slab slabs of mayo and, and all that so um i believe we had a po' boy that had both um fried shrimp. oysters yes uh-huh fried oyster and yeah. the fried shrimp right i believe they yes. call that the just like the half and half or something like that mm-hmm. i think so. so so um can you recall i mean i mean we all share these things right so mm-hmm. um and i think you did a bit of the heavy lifting to be honest i if i recall i think i'll be honest i think i, I had something earlier that day uh, <laughs> of course it's already <laughs> I, I was wondering why you were so so weak that day <laughs> um but yes yeah, so the pull boy you know in that role you have ha- so the way how do you remember how it was like because i think when i was looking into it like i was trying to dig into it i was kind of surprised mm-hmm. on how the sandwich was laid out can you remind me oh yeah because it wasn't like all the shrimp on one side and all the oyster on one side i think uh-huh. it was just like mixed together uh, okay probably they just got two handfuls of each and just f- f- so it's not yeah so it wasn't clearly like separated there's yeah. some some mixture i guess to an extent okay yeah so um from your from your side my chami mean, biting into it what do you remember or what can what kind of thoughts do you have you know on it uh i don't know i liked it like i like the shrimp i don't know i like the fry it was good both okay. the shrimp and the oyster okay um but i think i like the shrimp more than the oyster personally interesting okay now is that just because you just like shrimp over oyster in general or do you think like you know, maybe the oyster didn't cut it or like, I don't know, like. Yeah, I think it was kind of, I, I wasn't a big fan of their fried oyster, I guess, okay. maybe. Okay. It I, seemed a little salty. Interesting. Okay. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I, I totally get it. I mean, I, I, I didn't know what to expect, um, you know, or whatever. So, um, mm. and myself, again, having, I guess, conveniently having come back from, uh, from New Orleans, I guess maybe uh-huh. my what I'm looking for, my, what I'm eyeing is a little different, you know, I don't know. Mm. So I think price wise, I think the sandwich was about $16, um, which is on par, I think with the, the price of the sandwiches that you see in New Orleans, they're probably less okay. over there to an extent. You could probably find them as less as maybe $12, $13. Oh, nice. Um, and in a, on in addition, the sandwiches there are much larger, mm. um, like a, yeah, big sub style sandwich like uh, i i have a poor comparison i can't i mean it's like poor comparison, but like you go to you know you go to a uh like the grocery store like bonds or ralph's and they have those big sub sandwiches yeah <laughs> kind of reminds me of that i'm, I'm yes, not saying the ones you I, just buy pre-made but, huge. but i'm saying like the large it kind of reminds me of that They're like this big okay, may, maybe i'm exaggerating but they, they, i'm okay. just i am trying to say like they are huge they're larger than what we okay. have what we tried here this okay. this would be equivalent to what I don't know, like a subway foot long. I have no idea. Maybe um, I'd say so, but less filling. Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm just Depending trying to on how big you get your subs. I yeah, guess. I I'm trying to just kind of establish some sort of scale, which I'm doing a poor uh-huh. job of. But, <laughs> um, but yes, uh, as far as the sandwich goes, if you know if that's what you're. What you recall, I yeah, I thought mm. the sandwich overall was uh, was pretty good. Uh, I think I like you. I like the shrimp. Um, I also like the oyster. Um, I didn't think it was too salty, and okay. uh, I thought the fry was was good too. I don't think I think there's a fear. Some other places I might have visited, um, you know, the fry might might easily get uh, soggy. I think because of something wet like. An oyster or whatever but um this one holds up okay holds up pretty mm-hmm. good um yeah. i i i do still miss there is a certain degree of of 
uh, fry and batter that I recall from New Orleans. It's like super crispy and um, that you don't, I don't quite find. Um, Beignet dough. <laughs> That's all it is. Well, we'll get. They use okay. that to fry their seafood. You think it's oh. the same? It's all the same. They just mix it all together. Oh, yeah. Sure, why not? Okay, that'd be awesome. That's why it's all sweet in there too. Okay, um, <laughs> but um, the bread is still uh, something I'm still looking for. You know, um, comparable. The, okay. the bread here is softer. It's a soft. It feels like a soft roll. Um, oh yeah, you yeah. want the toastier. Usually, you want something that's a little. Yeah, not as a toaster, but like it's like, but has that quality of like a crispier, you know, exterior, you know. Um, here, this is like a, yeah, like it's it's a sandwich roll with a, that's a little soft, because um, you I think you just want something that will hold up to the degree of like whatever is being filled in there. Um, so structurally, you know, um, holds up. So, I mean, Pope Boys, as far as their offerings, they're just, I think they offer like so many types. So again, you have the shrimp, you have oyster, whether it's mixed or together, they have like catfish and uh, roast beef. Um, I'm looking at a menu, whether it's correct or not, or whether it's still, there's um, poutine. Is that right? Oh, I think this is an old menu, but I have no idea. Um, But yeah, oh, like I po said. Boy? The po boy, yeah, we can check. This is, I think this is an older menu, but um, if uh, yeah, that's um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think here. You could have whatever you want in your po boy, okay? So I'm yeah. just saying that there's a variety. You're not limited to shrimp, although shrimp is the most common, probably one of the most popular uh, you'd find. Um. The next uh, one we wanted to talk about uh, we that we ordered was a, a muffaletta. And oh, yeah. uh, if you remember the muffaletta, we talked about this before, um, but the muffaletta is basically a, a large, round, sandwich. yeah, Italian deli sandwich <laughs> and a, yeah. on a and a large seated uh, bread roll. And I don't mean like a hamburger bun. I'm talking about a large, almost personal pizza sized you know, kind of size. Like a vinyl record size there sandwich. There you go. Exactly. Um, and in there you have slices of things like, what, salami, uh, you know, cured meats, you know. Mm -hmm. Cold um, cuts. Cold cuts. Problem. And it doesn't have to be cold. I think the sandwich is typically served cold, but you could ask for it uh, warmed up or toasted. Mm -hmm. I think like we did, we got ours toasted. Yes, toasted. Yep. yep. Um, but... Um, what what also kind of makes it characteristic instead of being just a large deli sandwich is it comes with a um a, what they call an olive salad so it's it's uh it's a, a mix of olives and um like sweet pepper and and things like that in a mixture of like olive oil that you would spread you know on the sandwich so do you what can you remember from what we, uh, you know, well, from trying I remember that? it was, it was dry. You were not a fan of the dryness. Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. It didn't have enough. It didn't have enough oil for the olive, olive. That's a good point. Or whatever it was. No, it's a good point. But yeah. Flavor wise, you did like it a lot. And I'm I asking. am a fan of, of, uh, of just cured meats in general. So you can't okay. go wrong. Okay. Like, yeah, I'm asking for your thoughts. I'm not asking. <laughs> I'll get to my. Uh, you're asking too. what I remember. <laughs> oh, that's true. that's what I remember. That's what you remember. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Good. Point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was good. I liked the the, the cheese. The cheese was good. I like. I just like meat, so yeah. it was fine. Yeah. I will I say you. we did. We had to uh, incorporate a little extra extra liquid in there via what was it the the craw mac. Oh, but interesting. That oh. also made it really good, I will say. <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit. Yes, that's a very interesting, I guess, an impromptu hack, if you will. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, take it from us, I guess, who eat a lot. I just ate a cr grilled cheese sandwich with sour cream. <laughs> don't take my advice on anything, man. <laughs> or maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I and liked the, it. I don't and, know. And with a guy like me, you can trust the fat guy, right? I think that's okay. Uh <laughs> So, <laughs> the muffaletta 
let's see if I can bring up or just at least try to recall. So again, a large seated, you know, sesame, you know, um, bun, th- loaf. Let's call it a loaf. I think it's a loaf. <laughs> sure. I'm um, looking here at the meat, salami, uh, sopr- mm, soprasada. The heck is that? I forget. It's a meat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Capicola, mortadella, provolone, mozzarella. Um, Sopsada, dry salami. Thank you, salami. But you have the Genoa salami, so you got two types of salami. What's capicola? Uh, oh, capicola yeah. is traditional Italian Swiss and pork. Oh, Italian and Swiss pork cold cut, made from dry cured mussel. Uh, it's another salami. Okay, salami, like we said, salami provolone. <laughs> Yeah. Um, again, deli sandwich, it's cured meat. Um, so with that and topped with the homemade olive salad. So like you said, my chow, um, again, um, just trying to compare, I, I, I don't want to say like, I don't want to just like put them on head to head, but I don't know if like, it's just their approach on doing this or if like, it's part of like what they, what they were, you know, on their take of doing this item, uh, because of how they were where they you know where they grew up or where they were training their upbringing maybe it's like part of like the memory of how they you know how how they know how to make this the sandwich and this um and it's not like it's wrong it's just that's the way they know how to do it you know yeah but to what you said um for me the sandwich the bread was on the dry side um i think with um the loaf and the bread uh, that I had from New Orleans and specifically from Central Grocery, it was uh, like a softer, certainly a softer, um, uh, softer loaf. And I think maybe what had lent to it um, was there was a difference with the olive salad. So um, mm-hmm. in at Central Grocery with their sandwich, um, the olive salad is um really soaked in you know olive oil so when you actually take apart the sandwich you can see the bits of the olives and and those other components but it's in you know it's coated and really soaked Mm -hmm. in in the olive oil and the olive oil makes its way into the bread and also lends to some of the moisture there here um we see the components of the olive salad. We see the olives and, and, the, and, the, and the other vegetables in there, but there's not much in the way. It's probably just lightly coated in um, in olive oil, but it's not like drenched or soaked in the same way. So there, the bread has nothing to soak or absorb. Um, and so the bread is just there as is. Um, so it is different in that way. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but um, it's just... Uh, you know, that, that take on doing the muffaletta. Right. So, but yes, overall the flavor and and it was on, you know, uh, was great. I mean, just even as a deli sandwich on its own, I think it's something that, you know, we would enjoy. I don't remember. It's been a while, of course, since, you know, having that with Patrick, I think that was one Mm -hmm. of the first items we would have, I think we ordered and we were, and we were just kind of not sure what we were getting ourselves into as a large, you know, sandwich. (laughs) But again, it's a deli sandwich, and we know, de- and you know, there's nothing wrong with a deli sandwich. So, uh, something we both enjoyed. Um, but yeah, knowing a little more, I guess, in the context of you know its preparation and where it's coming from, then yeah, it's uh, uh, it's a different different approach. Still enjoyed, um, but uh, maybe I'll have to try it again. It's, it it is unfair to kind of give it a shake just on that first right first attempt. So. Yeah, of trying it. So, um, if if we do revisit and and try that again, then we can kind of um, see again, like what it's all about. So, um, but that was the the muffaletta. So the next item to what you alluded to was the crawfish mac and cheese, yeah. and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was probably one of the uh, the highlights. I'd say in that menu. Yep. So what can you tell or us at least about? For me, yeah. What can you tell us about uh, about that dish? I mean, it's mac and cheese. It's crawfish. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's oily, which is good. 
which I liked. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like too oily kind of thing. Okay. Um, and there were like, I don't know if it were big chunks of crawfish, but there were like chunks of crawfish in there. Like you, when you take a bite, you can taste that you can feel it in okay. your mouth. It was good. All right. Well, crawfish, I think in general, unfortunately, it doesn't have a large payout when you, um, if yeah. you were, if you do like a, a seafood boil or something, right. And you get the crawfish, you're doing all this work just for like a little nugget of whatever. <laughs> you just don't like peeling things. Okay. Like, you don't yeah, I mean, that's shit. true. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I just have a problem with that. That's why I <laughs> rarely step foot into those kinds of restaurants. <laughs> um, but the crawfish mac and cheese, I think, yeah, it was a uh, super cheesy. They used, uh, what do they use for the pasta? It's like the twirly thing, right? What's the twirly yeah. noodle called? Is that fusilli? Okay. Can you do a fact check? I have no idea. What if you searched for twisty <laughs> noodle? <laughs> <laughs> um, noodle. all right. Yeah. But as you Maybe. look at that, I mean, like it's. It is like it's got a hit, you know, of of uh, good flavor, you know, not just from the crawfish. I'm sure they put in some like Creole style seasoning um, oh, on sure. there, you know, good it's, amount. It's of either fusilli or jamelli. Okay, probably fusilli. Uh, but what the heck do I know? Um, Me. But yeah, that's uh, that was definitely the vibe. And then as to what you said, it's like um, with that flavor it came with a, a good amount of. Um, of like oil, you know, from, Great. you know, from there. So I use some of that and I apply that towards, uh, the muffaletta and, uh, there's your life hack, uh, for <laughs> heart disease. So, um, no, I think, it, I think it, I think it was, uh, I think it made a, a difference. It was a nice, just a fun play, you know, just kind of mixing that up and then, yeah, just, uh, in being able to, I guess, down that, um that loaf a little a little more so yeah yeah but that was um the crawfish uh mac and cheese so yeah i think yeah. from all the sides I, like mac and cheese i think like with patrick i i don't think it really mattered where it came from it uh but a <laughs> mac and cheese is a like any mac and cheese is a good mac and cheese like you're not i don't think it was very uh picky um you know where it came from it's just that it was a good like comfort food right Mm. super carby super cheesy yeah couldn't go wrong with that so it was it was good it was good so um but uh let's see now we kind of rounded everything off there um with one item uh that i i expected to be in the menu i didn't know it would have been on the menu like way back when um but but uh, is on the menu these days and it's uh they're beignets um as i think you would i would expect from a new orleans you know spot um mm -hmm. given my vast knowledge of new orleans cuisine <laughs> i mean right. of the two of us it's exponentially different i guess so levels of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and the levels of calories as well uh the beignets uh <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about beignets before beignets are these uh little fried pieces of dough um that puff up you know and throw them in the fryer and then they're uh topped off with ex as expectations would have mountains of powdered sugar um and um price wise it it's actually not too far off than what you'd find in new orleans oh okay. you know, like this maybe the spread of 50 cents a dollar difference not that bad okay it's not bad comes with uh three pieces of beignets topped with sugar with the sugar and in a bag mm -hmm. and uh um, already topped yes thankfully yes you don't need to top <laughs> nothing yourself you don't put the work on you you know um i'm just so curious what was wrong with that that dispenser that you had that you hated so much I don't hate the dispenser. I just, I just, um, I was just shocked that <laughs> <laughs> that people will have different levels of sugar that they want to deal with. That's correct. Because the beignet <laughs> just should be as it like as tradition as should much have as it possible. exactly <laughs> an excessive uh, amount of white powder. <laughs> uh, fair. So I will. I won't disagree. Yeah. So with the beignets, though, um, you would want to pair that with a drink and um, 
characteristically would be a cafe au lait, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, uh, it's a coffee, it's a ground roasted coffee, usually a French style coffee, but also filled with um, uh, the ingredient of chicory. So, um, and so with that, historically, you know, from what I understand, chicory was meant again as a filler to, um, uh, to prolong the supply of coffee that, um, you know, that they had back then. So the chicory plant gives this like a little bit of herbiness and woodiness or whatever at Cafe Olay, um, Cafe du Monde, sorry, I think it comes through the most notably, um, in addition to the coffee, it's served with like a cream. Um, but even so, um, the, uh, the drink itself is, you know, you can definitely come through. Um, now I remember you had, I think I was not going to get the, uh, the drink, the cafe Ole originally, but I think you had opted for it. So I think you were able to enjoy that. you um, yeah. mostly, but, um, w- let's start with that. Uh, what, what can you tell me about the, uh, about the cafe Ole? I don't remember. Okay, it's moving coffee. on. <laughs> that wasn't as sweet. So Not as sweet. The, yeah, so I dunked the uh, beignet into it. Yes. And it was a lot better, actually. Absolutely. Once you put the excess powdered sugar in exactly. there. Exactly. So I don't, yeah, so I don't think it's served with sugar. It's just the coffee and the cream. Like, that's tradition yeah, how it's served. So. so the sugar itself is not included in there, which is why your beignets need to come with sugar. <laughs> So that you can add to it in the cafe au lait as mm. you to dial as you wish, right? Um, <laughs> sure, okay. sure. I don't know why I'm getting so worked up about this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, boy, both. yeah, I know. But um, to the um, the beignets, uh, I think we made. Okay. They were good, thankfully, but I think we made a slight, what's the word? I don't say error, but we, I think it is a misstep as far as the order of enjoying these foods. Oh, the thing is that the beignets, because of the way they're cooked and they're fried, they need to be enjoyed uh, right away. Yeah. Yeah. So unlike a regular donut, you can just sit out there, you could have at the end of the day or whatever. These, when they go cold, they're, they don't, yeah, they're not quite as enjoyable. Yeah. Um, they get the doughiness really co- starts coming through and, and, um, the texture kind of changes a little bit. It's almost like a McDonald's fry. It's like, uh, it's great when it's hot. And then as soon as it's, uh, cools down, it's Room like temperature, it's right. garbage. Yeah. yeah not, these weren't garbage. Exactly. These even, aren't even garbage. They were still pretty good. You like them? Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's again, a little, a little chewier than I would have liked, but that's Sure. Fine. Exactly. We knew the reason so, for that. So, um, the beignets, but when you, as you said, when you dunk them into the, the cafe au lait, right, you get it soaked up, it comes a little more enjoyable. You, 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 drop a little bit of the powdered sugar in there. Yeah. I think that's kind of the experience that, um, you know, that you would want to enjoy that, uh, that type mm-hmm. of, uh, item. So, yeah. So, um, the beignets there now that, you know, what I imagine, I'm not saying that they do, but I'm thinking that more likely than not, um, they probably have the, the mix uh, that you get from Cafe du Monde, uh, you know, they sell this uh, in these like in these canisters, um, like mm-hmm. a coffee canister style kind of thing, but it's like yeah. a beignet mix. And, um, and then you just mix it probably with like water or something. And then you just drop it in the fryer and then you're good, you know? So, um, I have a feeling that's like how the majority of places that serve beignets, um, here or maybe elsewhere, um, Serve it. I am interested one day to, if I find my way at downtown Disney, um, there is a restaurant there. Uh, a stand, I think it was once part of a restaurant, and then now they also have their own standalone thing. But um, they they serve beignets there, so I'd be interested to see. Oh, yeah. Well, there's um, one in, yeah, in downtown. It's part of the restaurant, but they also 
like the side you can order on the side yeah specifically yeah that's I, yeah. that's what i'm looking at so i want to yeah. want to look at that one because i mean obviously we've had the ones at you know in new orleans square um mm -hmm. but but i haven't had them uh otherwise so be interested to see but yeah, yeah that, that's not an item that uh i remember getting or seeing um you know uh, early on um mm. but uh, first time you were there but now knowing more uh, about you know the offerings of a New Orleans style uh, restaurant and their cuisine, then yeah, I think if they have the beignet, I should try the beignet. Mm. But yeah, I, I feel like um, you know similarly, uh, I like I said, so this kind of rounds out the the menu. I think of what um, Patrick and I would would get or would have gotten. I don't remember how many times okay. we've been there um, during our time. Obviously, mm -hmm. at least once, maybe a couple times, yeah. um, but but it was just nice. I mean, I don't. I'm sure we enjoyed what we had. Um, it was just nice being able to um, just eat, I guess, <laughs> just late at night or whatever, and uh, I see. Uh, just take random ventures, you know. Mm -hmm. Just say text, "Hey, you home?" You know, and it's like, or come outside. <laughs> With with no uh, preparation at all, it's like sounds like a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> it's a foodie a, call, if you will. A foodie call. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is just one of those places. Yeah, I guess it is. It, it kind of very coincidental, very convenient that it just uh, lines up after a trip to New Orleans. But yeah. I was again. I was trying to be considerate for your time. They want to take too sure, much, sure, you know. Come sure. on, I mean, like you know, you get to, you have to eat, you have to spend, and then have to take you back, and then you got to prepare, right? You can't just like, I don't know. I just trying to give you a little more time. Don't want to to rush sure, you or anything, sure. okay? Or really rush right. us. At least here, we're <laughs> close by. We can spend a yeah, little more time true. where we are, a little more relaxed, and then if we need to take you back, you're not too far away. So yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But uh, I feel like there's something we're missing. Something we didn't discuss yet. Okay. Um, I'm looking at this and I don't know mm -hmm. what you're talking about. <laughs> it was the, um, the Nor we had another po' boy. We had a second po' boy. We did? Yeah. It was the, the barbecue, the bar New Orleans barbecue shrimp. Oh my God. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Like, oh, wow. You're... Shoot. Uh, Damn, I guess we wrapped really it up here. Did. No, I don't know, man. It's not that I, he's thinking like I've repressed his memory. So yeah, I, don't, I think you did. don't like it at all. Oh, that's a good. You said you, you didn't get New Orleans barbecue. And uh, I saw it on the menu. I was like, we got it. I, I want to try it. Yeah. So, yes, as my child said, um, we did get a second po' boy. Man, I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> and this one was a barbecue shrimp po' boy. Let me see. I don't remember. If it was a regular menu item or if it was like on special, oh. but, reg but regardless, um, yeah, my show was, uh, was kind of interested partly because I had talked about my experience with New Orleans style barbecue and whatever <laughs> that entails. Uh, like I said, like I've said, it's not bad. It's different. Okay. <laughs> it's a different take. It's. It's not Texas. Tell you that right now. It is not uh, in the same realm. Um, it's just a different take. So just in general, if, you know, again, I'm repeating here, but, you know, we talked about this in, you know, previous episode, but the um, the New Orleans style barbecue um, is very acid forward. There's a lot more of like lemon and pepper, uh, Worcester sauce, uh, olive oil. So those types of ingredients mixed in and gives it that yeah i think uh i think he agrees uh gives it that characteristic flavor but um you know unlike what i'm used to or maybe what we're you know with uh like other texas, styles of barbecue uh, texas or, or kansas yeah, yeah more ketchup mm -hmm. and um uh, mustard you know uh flavors um mm -hmm. but yeah it it's different so when we saw that item on the menu, a barbecue shrimp po' boy, uh, I guess it made sense to try it out. And so oh, we did. I really wanted to try it. Okay, so we did order it since <laughs> since you're so eager. Uh, why don't you <laughs> go ahead and share what you remember from that? I remember actually liking it a lot. 
Oh, great. I'm glad. I don't remember. Yeah, like I actually really liked it. It was, I still like the Crom Mac more, but I think that was. Of course, yeah. And the fried shrimp, but okay. I do like the barbecue. I like the, I remember liking the, bar, the New Orleans style barbecue shrimp more than I did the fried oyster. What do you think you liked about the barbecue shrimp? Um, I don't know. As far, I think I'm the sure acidity it's... is what it was. Okay. Okay. Like it. It was a good bite. I like the, uh, the the sandwich. It was a good bite of a sandwich kind of thing. You know. Good. So I, I just take a look at one of the menus. Just uh, it's part of the regular menu. It's a lor- if if it's the same one. This is the New Orleans style barbecue shrimp po' boy. Uh, briefly described, it's shrimp sautéed in a beer and Worcester spiked butter sauce. On, that explains it on a buttered loaf. That explains it. Butter just makes everything better. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it does. How can you go wrong with that? Right. It's uh, oh, so great. OK. Yeah. I mean, look, I I think I liked it, too. I don't think I disliked it. <laughs> you forgot about it. <laughs> I guess don't that's, you dare. I guess that speaks something huh? that really says something on. Oh, man. But yes. uh Thank you for remembering that. That's like I, I really, oh, yeah. I really didn't remember. I actually didn't even put. I just realized I didn't even put it in the outline. Not on the list. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, huh? I thought you were saving it for something. Well, that's see, that's why you're here. I mean, like, it's good <laughs> no, to no, keep... no. There's no justification for why I'm here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, no, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, contract is uh, over. I'm gone. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it'll be a while. Um, so. We've got a lot of, yeah, a lot of popcorn shrimp. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Two types of uh, po' boys, a muffaletta, crom mac, beignets. Um, I don't know if it's fair to like rank these. I don't think we do. We don't really do that. But nah. honestly, I know at the top, the crom mac is really up there, right? That's just like, oh, yeah. obviously from everything. So um, that was definitely the highlight. You know. And it wouldn't be fair to beignets because, like, we we had it as dessert. Like, we actually had it last, you know. So yeah, it's but not, I I'd say the highlight, yeah, I, easily the highlight would be the cromac, right? Okay. So yeah, I don't know, um, man. Maybe if we ate the beignets right right off the off the jump, it might have been it might be different. It could have been, yeah, yeah. Um, with that, as large as a menu as that was, personally, I think, um, even if I hadn't eaten uh, beforehand, I I think it would still be a lot. Uh, to tackle but with that said uh, similar to to my visit to New Orleans there are still a few items I wish I would have been able to try uh, well, but hadn't um, like for example um, I'm looking give me one second <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a big menu like they have a it lot is. of stuff I mean again like the po' boys alone is like takes yeah. the majority of the menu that's the thing yeah, it's like, like one I, side of a, of a legal size paper yeah i mean look i'm i'm looking um just like i think they sort it i don't know how they sort this but like towards the end of the menu there's a soft shell crab po boy so you could have um soft shell in uh, oh look this very last mm-hmm. item the soft shell crab s- supreme oh we're, oh, oh. Yeah, it's two whole fried soft shell uh, with the the New Orleans style barbecue shrimp <laughs> <laughs> and Havarti cheese you can go wrong with, that. Um, with uh, bacon bits, dry Italian Onion cheese, spickles. and remoulade. Interesting. Yeah. What's the uh, what was that you're talking about? The slop, the sloppy Joe. I forget. Yeah, it's a sl- they have a sloppy Joe po' boy. What re- read off what uh, what comes with that? It's just Little Jewel, OG, Sloppy Joe, Mayo, Cheddar, Jalapenos, and Onions. Mm. It sounds good. I'm sure it is good. We've got to try that. Yeah. I mean, got to come back, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's good. What else did I want to try? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, actually. I, I have to look closer to look at the menu. I don't even know if they have it. I was just assuming that I had something oh, I need to like try. special. But I would say, like, um, the kinds of things I would want to try from a New Orleans restaurant would also include gumbo, um, um, definitely gumbo, and maybe jambalaya. Um, okay. But uh, definitely gumbo. So I have to take a look if, uh, if they do, in fact. Uh, they don't have jambalaya, but they do have a gumbo. Okay. So definitely need to do the gumbo because gumbo is definitely a, a quintessential uh, New Orleans uh, dish yeah. to 
to have. Pretty old dish, yeah. Um, I don't know if they have a... I want to see if you can take a look for me as well. Um, if they have any variation or inclusion of uh, what they call an etouffee. That's not an English, man. It's not. Typically, it's How a shrimp. How am I supposed to spell that? Uh, e- I see. Yeah. E-T, I, I got it, I got it. I mean, Google will just <laughs> autocorrect yeah. for you or something. But they have if, a shrimp and crawfish etouffee. Okay, so an etouffee would be a nice thing to try too. It's it's that's a good intersection of of the Ooh. French and the New Orleans kind of cuisine. Yeah, it it's looks a sh- good. Yeah, so it's a smothered shrimp kind of dish. Um, it's like if I, I it's not the same as gumbo, but um, it people do kind of compare them a lot, but um. Etouffee, I think, is a little thicker, almost mm-hmm. more on the gravy side, more than gumbo. So, um, but yeah, so it's like if you took gumbo and like turned it up a little bit, then you get etouffee. Okay. Um, I, so that would be another, you know, kind of thing to try. But uh, it, they have, you said that was, uh, was that under what part? It's like that its own dish or is it part of a, like a, I don't know, what, what part of the menu uh, is it under? I mean, it's its own thing. Uh, it's under daily specials. Oh, it's a special. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have to... Oh, they do have a jambalaya. Oh, nice. Yeah, they also have that. So they, one of each next time. Jambalaya, gumbo, etouffee. Next Perfect. time you go. Uh, we go, right? We go. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're not too far away. Just uh, just text. Hey, you, you free? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just like the good old days yeah so but yeah that was um that was our visit to little jewel new orleans getting out in chinatown um i'm glad they're still around and i hope they stick around uh for much longer i don't know like um again if you compare to you know what they offer in new orleans you know i'm there's a lot of uh you know parallels and and comparisons you can make uh, a lot of good things you can say uh, i'm just glad that they they brought that over here so mm. i mean if you're out there or you make a visit it's definitely worth uh worth your time so uh yeah we we got to think about other places we kind of got i feel like we need to do a little uh crawl again um maybe uh more of a uh, uh patrick's uh well, oh. No, just for Patrick, I think, you know, I, see. I feel like that. Yeah, that kind of rounds out uh, our visit. And I hope uh, when you're out, if you're out there, that you get to enjoy that. You got any other thoughts, my show? Um, or are you just waiting for that sponsorship from uh, from Hormel? I mean, I'm always ready for Hormel, but hopefully they're ready for you. <laughs> they're ready for us. <laughs> yeah, uh, they better be. <laughs> well, it looks like we've come to the end of another episode. So thank you for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Make sure to reach out. Uh, we're here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow. You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com where you can send us your feedback and your love letters. Find the videos here on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. I'm my chow. And in your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. One last thing I wanted to ask you about. Um, What's up? And I think we kind of uh, talked about it like offline before, um, but I thought it was worth mentioning is a little bit about the, um, you know, the Hurricane. I believe it's uh, oh. how they coined that. Um, what about it? Well, Hillary? I'm just, uh, yeah. Her, what is it? it? was Hurricane, right? I, <laughs> yeah, Hurricane Hillary. Well, it wasn't uh, a hurricane when it hit us. That's right. It was a tropical storm. Tropical storm. Yeah. It eventually, it eventually got downgraded. But I am curious um, because it has hit, you know, different areas, whether in Southern California 
or even in LA itself, um, in different ways, depending on, you know, where you found yourself. But I, I am curious for you where, um, where you found yourself or how, how it was for you. Uh, if you did, if you did anything to kind of prep for it or expect, or I don't know, what do you think? Well, we, it, it wasn't necessarily to prep for it, but I got paid. So we were going to, we went to Costco that Saturday or we, that was our plan from weeks prior, but it just conveniently turned out to be the day before Hillary was supposed to hit LA. So, so what is that? Costco. So, you, uh, what does that mean then? So you bought supplies, I guess, or, I mean, you I would mean, have done your grocery anyway or whatever your trip to yeah. Costco, but like, Oh, I guess what did you do a little differently? Um, we, we did one thing differently and that was just buy a case of water. Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay. Bottled water. Yeah, that's it. Cause we normally don't get bottled water. So, okay. We did just in case. And so how, um, that, that was it. Well then how, uh, how was it for you when that day came, you know, on a landfall, I suppose, like what, um, ended up happening there? I mean, I was just at home most of the day, so it was nice. Like it was raining on and off and stuff, but then that earthquake hit, I was like, what the hell this too now? Yeah. Um, so you felt it. Oh yeah. We felt it. Like I was sitting on my couch right here playing, spider-man yeah. on my on my uh, tv yeah. and i just felt the couch shaking it's like oh god what is this okay. it wasn't too long though it was uh, only like less than 10 seconds maybe less than five seconds even i don't know okay. and nothing fell but i okay. could, like i didn't even see anything shaking i just felt it so there's that only in the dog slipped through it so the, oh really it been okay. that bad. the dog didn't even notice so that's how you know ah okay yeah that was a pretty uh strong quake though coming from i think it was ojai um yeah like a five yeah, how's it for you you know uh for me personally out here in um carson long beach area um i i think it was just like uh one of those just like a rain heavy rainy day thankfully like mm-hmm. i didn't have to experience like i could see outside that um the sidewalks were you know were definitely you know definitely um had water flowing along there but nothing that um you couldn't like drive over or you know get messed oh, up with. okay i don't know like it, it i i feel that we were fortunate to not be as impacted i think you know i think mm-hmm. we were expecting you know extensive maybe power outages you know those sort of interruptions or yeah um i mean what was it a lot of inland empire got a lot of power outages from what i read I think so, those were the the heaviest affected, you know, yeah. those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we got um, lucky here, like more of the city area was fine. Yeah. But I think there were some reports. I mean, even in the city of LA, I think there were oh, some the city of LA. Um, I, I think those that, you know, in the Valley, uh, are definitely mm-hmm. some parts of the Valley are, are definitely affected. I think there was some picks from Dodger stadium. You could see a good amount oh, of flooding, yeah. you know, from there. Um, well, I thought that was just an optical illusion kind of thing. Like is the it? lighting. Oh, that's what I read. Because again, Dodger Stadium is at the top of it. It's like a hill, right? So it could have mm-hmm, been. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't have been that bad, but I don't know. Well, Supposedly, I, it was uh, the way the lights were reflecting off the off the water that made oh, it look worse than it was. Ah, okay. But there are still parts of the city that um, definitely were heavier. Oh um, yeah, you know, hit than others. Um, but thankfully, <laughs> at least in our respective areas where we were. Well, uh, thankfully, we didn't have to go out. I mean, did you have to? I went to work. Oh, boy. On okay. The, I, was, I was up there. So it's like a five-minute drive, so whatever. It was fine for me. But for pe- other people that had to make that, like, I was texting our manager all day because it's uh-huh. the music center. It was at Disney Concert Hall. I was like, I, is, it, is it canceled yet for the hurricane? Really? No. Uh-huh. Really? Is it canceled yet? There's an earthquake. No. Like an hour before the shift, they're like, all right, just a reminder, it's not canceled. God damn it. <laughs> Man, so... There was still a uh, still performance uh, going on. Yeah, and- like the um, the play uh, canceled its performance for that day, but the it was a recital, I guess, by Loyola Marymount. Uh huh. So they they refused to cancel it. Really? They didn't want to refund. They didn't want to refund people or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Hmm. Very ups- Everyone was like, "Why are we here?" Even like my manager was like, "Why are we here?" <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I feel like- bad. Yeah, because during the, like, while I was working that shift, there mm-hmm. it, the rating actually started getting pretty hard. Like, people were coming in drenched. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like I, I, I could see out the windows. It was, it was raining hard while the concert was going on. I see. But um, thankful. I mean, you're close by, you know. Um, yeah. So thankfully, yeah. like, kind of commute and back and forth wasn't uh, too difficult. Yeah. Yeah, me personally, sure. But uh, the people have to do further commutes, and those who don't have to take the bus. Ooh. Oh man. I yeah. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, it was. But- on the plus side, by the time we were out, the raining was already done. Oh, really? At okay. least for the night. Yeah, it started raining again later, like I don't that's know, right. five a.m. or something. Oh, that's right. By the uh-huh. time we were out, it was it was already like got it. There, there's no rain, which was very helpful. Got it. Okay. Yeah, thankfully, um, there doesn't seem to be any reports. There weren't any reports of like fatalities or anything. Um, I think I think uh, L.A. I don't know whether it's the city or the county what what i'm speaking to but i feel like um i'll say la as a whole, in general i feel like uh, the area was maybe was well prepared maybe over prepared to an extent yeah. um probably and i think it helped i mean you know if we didn't report any you know any fatalities or anything mm-hmm. i guess uh, hopefully that was a result of you know this level of preparation I don't know though, man. Like no? when I was at Costco, uh-huh. it had the whole panic. You, you remember how there oh, was panic no buying? Freaking, yes. Yeah. Right. So much panic buying. Like I saw people with, whose carts was full of just water, like cases of water. I'm sure. Or, like I'm at sure. checkout, like what the fuck? Yeah. Come on. It's not that. It's not gonna be that serious. <laughs> um. Or maybe it's just their excuse, like, oh, I forgot. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I might as well do it now. I'm just water. Going yeah, to Costco exactly. just for water. Oh, yes. Okay, sure. Yeah, I've think... done a Costco trip where I bought one item only, and it was a mistake. That line was lo- the lines were actually were way longer than normal too because people were there preparing. Yeah. I guess. But it does take Very a lot. It does take a certain kind of person, honestly, actually, to uh, to to buy just one item from Costco. <laughs> um, I did it once or twice. It was a mistake. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth the time, you know, it's like, oh, you're there already. It's like, you might as well just buy the whole, you know, half the, half the aisle or something, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Cause when I did it, it was like later at night on the way home from work. Yeah. So it wasn't, the line wasn't too bad, but still. Okay. It was a mistake. Okay. Um, well, thankfully what was not a mistake was again, being prepared for, you know, what was yeah, it very well, I was well, always better like yeah i even had to grab my uh because you know you have one of those uh jump starters for a car like it's yeah. just a battery pack i had mm-hmm. to i got it out of my car and had to charge it just in case I'm like oh i might need this yeah I, yeah so you know it can't be there's no no such thing as being too prepared i guess no no but thankfully for you no interruptions to like power or you know yeah. utilities or anything even internet you know yeah I would yeah. have died. I would. Just, I know. Died if there's yeah. no internet. <laughs> Literally, yeah. If it wasn't the floods, it was uh, the lack of internet. So yeah, <laughs> very important these days. It should be a was a federal re- or what is it? A public utility. The internet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not already. It's too bad. I'm not surprised. Look at AT and T. Yeah. Right. AT and T Spectrum. Yeah. Even Verizon. Yeah. As much as I like Verizon, they're also just part of the problem. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully they will provide the services that we need uh, to communicate with each other. Sure, sure. Whatever we do, even though they extort us with pricing <laughs> at the door. I don't know. But Honestly. okay. I just, yeah, I just wanted to kind of check in on that. And, you know, apparently I think everyone in, in our group was also okay i don't think they found themselves Mm -hmm. in any like kind of precarious situation or anything i think everyone was more or less home or at least in an area they can be okay so yeah pretty good okay well that's uh just a reminder to stay safe out there um just prepare when you can i i know not everyone necessarily has the luxury either to be prepared, maybe have the essentials or um, resources to do that. But um, if you can, that is always uh, always a good move. But all right. Well, uh, that's it from us. And hopefully we'll uh, check in again next time.